Good afternoon, you guys. It's Robert Robles with Complete Truck Body Repair. You can find us online at completetruckbody.com. Uh, we're over in Compton, California. Um, I'm just going to run through the install of the Premium Supply PH520 Dump Hoist. It's an 8-ton dump hoist. You can buy it online, premiumsupply.com. I think that's their website. Uh, but just Premium Supply out of Greenville, Texas. There you go. Premium-supply.com. Uh, this is an 8-ton hoist. It'll do... Uh, up to eight tons, but take that with a grain of salt because a lot of these trucks won't do eight tons if you try to dump off of them. So <clears throat> in order for you to go ahead and really get the install done correctly, what you're going to need is uh, some metal working equipment, uh, definitely a chop saw, definitely some um, angle or access to um, steel, you know, s the store. Um, you're going to need a welding machine, and I don't want to see anybody installing these with your, you know, your 110 Harbor Freight uh uh baby little welders you can get good welds on those you got to be real skilled and if you bought one of those i'm not saying you're not skilled but maybe you should invest in a better machine you know, rent one i bet they rent them somewhere you can even you can call somebody uh, up and they'll go weld it for you you can use if you're good with stick welding you're good with electrode welding i definitely suggest it it's it's great we use uh, mig here we don't do tig here just because we're doing large items and we're not doing anything that's particularly um um, in need of, of real delicate kind of stuff. So we do a lot of MIG here. You gotta get, you, so going through again, um, uh, you're gonna need a welder, you're gonna need a drill, an electric drill, number 10 drill bit or number 730 seconds. Um, you're gonna need uh, some, some metal working equipment, chop saw, uh, maybe a skill saw, uh, anything along those lines. So that you're gonna be able to cut these into pieces. Um, and you're gonna need some uh, other materials, ATF, some zip ties, stuff here along this, miscellaneous bolts and nuts. You just gotta be prepared to an extent to go ahead and prepare to install this. So I'm gonna run you through it real quick on how to go ahead and install this. We're installing it on an Isuzu NPR, I believe this is year 2000. It's a double cab and it's got a straight frame. And that's important because it's gonna be the easiest to install this hoist on. Um, if you're trying to install this on a Ford or a Dodge, you've usually got curved frames. And so it does make the install a little more difficult. You do have to build a subframe for the subframe to sit on. So that's the, that bar underneath here. That's the subframe um, that's going to be underneath the bed itself. So we'll go through real quick. Remember, this is hydraulic equipment. This is welding. You got to be safe out there. If you're welding, uh, it's a whole nother book. You know uh, how to be safe. You know, wear a mask, wear gloves, and have a have a buddy would be nice so you, you don't die. If you're if you're experienced, you know all about it. So <clears throat> hydraulics, you're dealing with hydraulics. This is dangerous. This can crush you. This can pinch you. You can lose a hand. You can easily, easily, easily get injured. So please be careful. We already have a subframe on this. Prior to having a subframe on it, you can be, you know, on the side or in the front, and it's okay. Now that I have a subframe on it, this is going to be above me, and it's being held to get up by that. So what we usually do is we wedge a piece of wood back there. You can even make like a little fork. Like a, imagine a little pitchfork to hold this front piece up on on this side. Pam, bam, bam on both sides. Or, you know, use a forklift to hold it up because it's it's going to get spooky if you go ahead and try to install this on your own and, and you don't have safety uh, stuff. So, you know, you get the pallet. The pallet's here. You get the box inside the box. And so there's going to be two cardboard boxes. It's going to be miscellaneous steel parts here, unpainted, hinges, um, other pieces here and there. <clears throat> that you're gonna need to install. It's gonna come with a manual and it's gonna come with the uh, 12 volt um, hydraulic pump and motor. So that's that right there um, and the mounts for that. So you've got a buddy, you've got 10 buddies, you've got a forklift or you've got a little frame with a come along on top and a chain and whatnot, you see that in the background. You're gonna place the hoist <clears throat> onto here, onto the frame. What, m what my guys usually do is they'll go ahead and prior to installing, because we already, we know, we know, this has to be level. So this is going to sink like this if we don't add a little spacer on here. So there's the cross member there. We've just added a, I believe that's a um, three by three, uh, no, a little smaller, maybe a two by two, um, one eighth inch pipe. And it really doesn't have to be too strong just because it's just going to sit on top of there and it's not going to push off from there. It's pushing off from here. So we've got, um, when, once you're getting ready into it, these feet that you see right here come with the kit. You slide those in, you adjust those as necessary. <sighs> 
and where it's going to sit well on top of the flange. Notice here, we don't have it on the edge of this angle. We have it just a little bit inset, and we've got real thick, uh, the real thick bead going all around. Um, and that's and that's going to be because we don't want it so far out where there's the rod itself isn't going to be as far and deep in as possible really supporting this item so just keep that in mind moving it around we've got a piece of angle here and this i believe is a four by three inch angle and we chose four by three because the chassis itself is two inches and we've chosen four inches because it does stick out a little farther here because of the the size of the material and we wanted to go a little farther over the flange of the um the 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 dump uh, the, i'm sorry the the channel itself so we do do that instead we bolted this on with 5 8 um grade 8 bolts they don't have to be grade 8 if you live anywhere where it snows where it's got salt in the road you need grade 8 there's no option so you need to put those on everywhere else where it's dry and 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 uh, you don't have to worry about that. Then just go ahead and use grade five or um, any anything like along those lines. So <clears throat> after you weld that on here, you'll notice that what we've done is we've also welded a flat bar on top of that. Uh, um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is a four by three three eighths inch um, piece of uh, angle. Um, and this is over here, I believe that's another 3 eighths piece right there. And all it is is just spacers because we'll, we'll walk to the back right there uh, where I've got the hinges mounted. But the reason we do that is because we don't want to pick up the body. You know, if we were to mount this directly like that, all that hoist right there would have to go into the body. So just keep that in mind because remember you're, 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 you have to install this underneath and this is meant for a trailer. So... It's got a real big chassis, real big subframe underneath uh, for the piston itself to mount to and push off of. So you have to find a house for that. So instead of bringing the body down and having that stick into the floor, we pick it up a little bit so that this is underneath. And I've got another dump inside. We'll run through it real quick. So after you've welded this all on, welded that side on, you got the little spacer bar in the back, making sure to also use, they include... I mean, this is a little like uh, a little ring right there that you use as a as a stop gauge for the pin itself so it's right there we weld it to the stationary piece not to the pipe <laughs> that moves that hinges so you know you want a little bit of common sense there if you're if you're familiar with any metal work whatsoever <clears throat> um We'll walk to here to the hinges in the rear and like I was saying we want to go ahead and we don't want to we don't want to put the hinges on top of the frame because then the hinges are here and then the, the subframe is higher and everything sits a lot higher um, which is good for uh, with the body but now if this is sitting higher here and that's sitting lower there it does this so we don't want to do that obviously <clears throat> so we we notch out the channel right here um and we just cut that and this is a half inch piece of angle i believe this is three by four as well so it, it spans the entire length it sticks out juts out just a little bit and the reason why if you're familiar with um some basic engineering having things pretty much seam together you know if this was here on the face here it would not be as strong as if it was sticking out a little bit um i don't i can't tell you the math offhand involved with that but you get the point um, so these are going to be the included hinges that come with the kit. It's got a little grease zerk in there. Um, a lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll just place it on top and weld it on top. You don't want to weld to, let me see if I can get my finger in there. Cause I got one thing in one hand, but you don't want to weld to the frame flanges. So this is the flange and this is this right here. My palm is the frame itself. And then there's the other flange because when you weld, to the flange it weakens it and can bend it so that's definitely a big 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 problem a lot of these trucks you'll see they have a large sticker on them that says do not weld or drill into frame flanges and that is an automatic disqualification for any warranty claims for most if not all truck body manufacturing um and it's dangerous so you obviously do not want to weld to the frame flanges where especially where it's gonna be lifting off of. A lot of guys don't use the angle. They just weld it directly on the frame. That's gonna break, that's gonna fail, I guarantee it. 
That's why we use the angle in, in lieu of uh, welding directly to the frame flanges. So <clears throat> after you've got your piece of half inch, or you can use three eighths, honestly, it's fine. Um, you weld this piece to the angle. And then you weld the top piece right there to the bar, which is gonna be your subframe. You get to the subframe later after you've installed this piece, but nonetheless, that's how that goes. You can run a little bead underneath there as well if you really wanna get into it, um, but you don't have to. So all along the faces here, we've welded that onto there. And we'll get a, we'll get a, we'll get a, a shot of the rear here. So that's all just nice and, and, and stuck right there. And you'll notice that we put uh, a flat bar to cover up the frame. This is the bottom of the frame. This is the other flange right there. So the, this is one flange and the other flange is more or less about here. So we just cover this up, um, A, for aesthetics and B, it, it does make it a little stronger to go ahead and have it being welded as one piece in lieu of um, welding it as separate items and whatnot. So uh, do keep that in mind. The kit also comes with these feet, which do are welded on the inside. Um, they're not welded on the outside. We um, opt to weld them a lot of times because it's uh, better, honestly. They might have actually forgot to finish welding that. So <laughs> I'm looking at the one we have here. Um, it's, it's been welded from the factory, so they might have just forgotten that. So that's why I say you got to be familiar with welding stuff like this. This is a foot that goes slid into that top tube like that. So you can see where we've tacked it onto the other side. Same thing, these have spacers, little collar spacers that hold them in. And those are gonna be sitting fair amount above the frame itself when you have it all flat. And, that's, and that will make sense once you go a little longer. Do not cut anything that comes with this kit. It is all done, engineered, and ready to install the way that it is. So do not cut. And they might forget to weld things, <laughs> but do not cut anything. <sighs> We're gonna run through something that I see a lot of guys just say, oh, I don't need that, I'm smart. <sighs> and I don't, I don't need to do stuff like that. <sighs> this in here is the safety prop. And I've got a good example inside of this already installed, but it's more or less gonna be installed on the frame right here and it'll pop up. And that little hat that I pulled out is where the safety prop pipe itself goes into. So that's how that goes in. So that's, those are super duper, super duper, super duper important to install. A lot of guys, the home guys, they don't install. They say, oh, well, that's just, that's not necessary. I don't need that. I don't need to waste time on that. Waste your time on it. <laughs> do it. It's super important. It's whenever you want to service this thing, you want it to be in the air, you want to be safe, put the safety prop up. If you don't have a safety prop in there, you're basically going to be, you know, in the event that something happens, you put your little body in there and it goes clack and then you die. So, or horribly disfigured. So you don't, you don't want that to happen. Um, after you've got everything more or less tacked up, ready to roll, it's now time to install the hoses. The hoses all come with a kit as well. You've got a high pressure port and a low pressure port. Uh, this is a double acting piston, so you do have their, they're not low pressure, high pressure, one's in, one's out. So um, you want to just go ahead and hook that up, run it. There's some zip ties that come with the kit to go ahead and hold the, the, um, the, the hose to the cylinder itself. So that's something you want to take note of. And then it all runs down here. Be wary of, if you're installing this on gas, this is diesel. So if you're installing it on gas or even diesel, be wary of points in which there'll be a lot of heat, excessive um, um, maybe electrical discharge, anything along those lines. So that is something you want to keep in mind um, for a lot of these things here. I'll walk around this cab. So you see right here, uh, is the batteries when we're welding and I should have started out with this, but if you know anything about welding on frames and you already know, disconnect the batteries when you're installing this, it's, you know, or when you're welding because you could fry the ECM, the ECU, definitely something you want to take note of. This comes with a 150 amp breaker, install that because if it, if the control breaks or gets stuck and it goes, oh, and cause you smashed it or something. It's good. Your hoist is going to go up, 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 and keep going and keep going and keep going. And it's going to fry your batteries, kill your batteries. Or 
it's going to fry the motor for, for no reason. So that's, it's also just in, in an event of a short. This is just a thermal breaker, so it, there's a little thing that expands inside, and it snaps, and then it shuts off any power going here. comes with a bus. That's, that's, it's um, uh, basically a flat bar with little holes in it, and just make sure that's going to be mounted right. This is not screwed in all the way because we're in the process of installing it. So when you're working on it, make sure that's disconnected. Make sure to put this piece on. It's very important. We've also got a, a fuse here, and this is for the body prop light. A lot of guys in California need it. I don't know how it is on the rest of the country, but there's a light here that we have. This will turn on when the hoist is up. And there's the switch right here. So when that switch is, that little foot is down, the light is off. When that foot is up, the light is on. So that's something you want to, that does not come included with the kit. That's something we install here. It's not a very difficult part to find, nor is it very difficult to install. Uh, we just put an angle there to go ahead and, and, and seat it. So the, the pump itself comes pre-assembled. Uh, all you have to do more or less is just hook it up and go per the instructions of the of the, the the pump the manual it doesn't it's not something that you need to go ahead and spend a lot of time on there's a solenoid there's a cable there's valves and then there you filled it with atf do not lose that cap that is a ventilated cap if you were to go ahead and screw that completely shut you basically make a little bomb if that was sealed her like air tight air tight it go pop and then it breaks so that's actually ventilated so that's a, it's a good thing to keep in mind that is automatic transmission fluid is what is recommended. Um, if you're in a colder climates, I'm really not familiar. We're, we're in California, it does, doesn't really get colder than 50 degrees. So there, I know there are mi different mixes, Dextron and, 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 and stuff like that. So that's something you wanna keep in mind. <clears throat> we do install these wood pieces. These wood, they're not, we call them razors. They, they can also be called just pieces of wood. Um, we screw them in. Uh, you can just tape them on. Uh, I did. You remember I did say don't screw or drill or do anything with the frame flanges. We screw them in because we understand that it's we are, we are truck body upfitters, so we understand what is appropriate, what is not appropriate. That's why I say take it with a grain of salt, because if you know what you're doing and you know where to weld it and you know where to drill it, it's okay. If it's the frame flange is cracked or bent, it's bent. But drilling into it's kind of a little a little hazy depending on who you are and who you ask. Um, if you really want to go ahead and be strict about it, you can just tape the wood on, but everybody knows how that goes. So, um, that's, that's how that goes. Uh, everything else about it though is pretty straightforward. I'll show you, um, a more completed one inside real quick before I head out. Um, uh, um, that we're, that we're working on. We're probably installing something like six different model hoists here and there, uh, here and there. So let's go ahead and walk over there. I'm trying to shoot this all in one shot because honestly, I don't have a lot of time to go ahead and and uh, make it look prettier. So <laughs> sorry if it's a little fast or a little haphazard. So we're installing this larger one right here. This is a tw an 18-ton hoist. Uh, same concepts though. You still got the feet here. You got the angle here, um, and you've got the same hinges in the rear. And then we've also got this unit here. This is going to be a little different. This is a Ford F450, and you can see we've only notched out the frame just a tiny little bit here, and then we've placed the angle on top right there. It's almost, almost, almost on top. We don't again like to go at anything with the flanges. In this case, in order to make sure this thing is level. We've actually had to go ahead and add a channel on top of the frame and bolt it onto the sides. We do not weld here. Notice, we do not weld here. We weld this piece. In theory, you could remove this whole hoist because all it is is bolted on. So that's really what I want to go through right there as far as everything else goes. Um, hitches and stuff like that. That's definitely something I want to touch on real quick. I wish I had a truck here to show you, but for the most part, if you've got a, you got a dump, now look at all that overhang that you have here. The fr you have, when you're towing, you have to pull from the frame. You cannot pull from the body. The only thing holding you to the truck is that hinge and that hoist. That is not strong enough for a 20,000 pound trailer. So you have to go ahead and take it upon yourself to do it correctly. You have to have an ICC bumper, a little T. I wish I had an example to show you, but I don't. Um, but it's basically an underride guard. You can look up on online ICC bumper. You need it because if somebody drives into the back of you, they're going to get decapitated. So you need to have one. Now, a lot of guys what they do is they install the ICC bumper. They put a ball hitch in the center and then they tow with that. You're going to break your truck. You're going to break your hoist. So 
what we do a lot of times here is we do um, frame mounted. This is this is one of the designs we do. We do another design, but we do a little frame mounted um, um, hitch. This is rounded for aesthetics, and it is a little better to have it like uh, instead of squared, it's rounded around, and this will go mounted underneath there and it'll be more or less about here. So you have still have a little inset. It is possible to do this with less of an overhang so you have no inset. I see guys, they do the butt of the body right here. And this you'll notice is angled to allow this to go here. So it, that's more advanced. Um, honestly, if you're just going ahead and installing this yourself or you wanna, you got a friend of yours who's pretty good with the, pretty good with the, uh, the, the tombstone, the Millermatic, the, uh, the you know the CV 300 I got here, um, go for it. Just go ahead and have them do it. Common sense dictates a lot. You got any questions? You got any concerns? You have some troubles? Um, contact us. We're definitely I'm definitely willing to go ahead and help you out as much as possible because I'm tired of seeing these half-ass jobs come in here from backyard welders that take people's that take people's hard work and monies, hard working people's money and then tell them to shove it when if there's any issues. And they come in and it's a DOT violation, it's a CHP violation, it's a state trooper or whatever you guys call it in other states violation. And they tow your truck, they impound your truck, they mark your truck for destruction because you paid somebody money to do a bad piss poor job, you know? So I wanna make sure everyone understands this is the way you more or less are gonna be able to do it. I've given you most of all the information that I can give you. Um, and it's up to you to go ahead and do your due diligence, due diligence and do it correctly and understand there are big, big no's. Do not weld to the frame flanges. Do not place your hoist in an inappropriate area. Do not weld with contaminated material in which you're going to end up with some welds that won't hold 200 pounds. If you do a good job, get good weld penetration, um, um, you can get this done pretty quickly. Keep in mind too, if you're going to pay someone to do this, I, I charge $1,800 if you bring this to me. Why? Because you're bringing me the hoist, you're bringing me some hinges, and you're bringing me some feet. You're not bringing me all the other material I outlined. You're not bringing me, there are also other pieces. <laughs> there are the channels that go underneath the body. There are these large channels that are originally that are there. You have to cut those out and you have to put new ones in because again, the hoist itself is so big, it goes into the floor um, and it's not gonna fit all the way. So you do need to replace those, those channels from here to here, whatever's appropriate. And you do have to cut out some of the cross members here and there. Try to do very minimal cutting to the cross members. That's gonna be your weakest point in the bed. So keep that in mind. Um, as far as everything else goes, you get a decent idea of more or less what we build here. Here's just a real quick rundown. I've got some four by eight sheets of steel. We, well, we screw them down so they don't bubble up and we run thick beads all around. And then we also weld these shut and grind them down just to go ahead and, and solidify that this is going to be held together in basically one square foot. So every square foot it's held down. And you've got some piping here that's going to be acting as a structure and some sheets with some bends in them. So that's all a little more advanced. If you got something that'll do that, that's fine. I'm tired of people having real rundown trucks and getting robbed and getting abused and letting it happen. So again, it's been Robert Robles with Complete Truck Body Repair. You can find us online, completetruckbody.com. Any questions, concern, leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them the best I can. Thanks.